is up guys, how are you guys doing today? So as you can see, today is Friday, which means we've got just, well not a bit of a regular, well kind of a regular day, but also not a regular day. Um, so as usual, we do have calculus and the chem lecture and English, but today I have a presentation for English that I have to do, so I will try to record the whole presentation if I can. Hopefully I will be able to. It's gonna, I don't know how I'm gonna be able to do it, but I will definitely try to figure out a way to do it. So hopefully um, I record that and you guys get to enjoy that. So I hope you enjoyed today's vlog. As a result of the Industrial Revolution that kicked off in the mid-1700s, the Earth's surface is warming up at a never-seen-before rate. A major reason for the rise in temperatures is the increase in the concentration of greenhouse gases in the Earth's atmosphere. These cause our planet to retain heat from the sun. Greenhouse gases such as carbon dioxide and methane are released into the atmosphere when fossil fuels takes its place and you never get a chance to learn anything. All because of one distraction. So attention is the key, and if we lose control of our attention. Okay guys, so quick update. So um I did the presentation, but apparently I must not have pressed the record button straight. I was trying to adjust the camera and I and I think I accidentally pressed the stop record button. So I'm really mad right now because I did not record the presentation. But instead of giving up, I'm going to try to do it again after everyone else was done. And so actually only one person went after me and then presentations were over. So just by chance, I just managed to find this classroom that is available right now. So um, yeah, I'm going to do this whole thing 
over again just for you guys. And also, I feel like this is a message that I think really needs to get out more because of just how prevalent it is in, in the U.S. So... I'm, so once again, I'm doing this for you guys. So I really hope you enjoyed the video in this part of the video. So yeah, thanks for understanding. Okay, guys. So um, I will be doing the presentation for you guys. This is the second time I'm going to do this presentation. So hopefully you guys enjoy this part of the video. So thanks for understanding. Okay, so. Christian nationalism. This is the subject of my presentation for today. Now, many of us understand that religion has played an important part in, in the lives of many. Obviously, it can give one a sense of purpose, a sense of community, uh, and so forth. But this, but what I'm going to be talking about, I think, has a very negative, is already having a negative impact on on the United States, but I think probably around the world, and, you're, and that's what I'll get into today. But first off, what is Christian nationalism? Well, Christian nationalism is defined as an idea, an ideology, really, that the, the United States has a special connection to God, and that it should declare itself to be a Christian nation. While this is the main belief, there are other elements that compose Christian nationalism, such as school prayer, public display of Christian symbols, and so forth. Dominionism, more specifically the Seven Mountains Mandate, is a movement within Christian nationalism which seeks to control family, religion, education, media, entertainment, business, and government. Now really I could compare this to the 1984 Terminator film and maybe to an extent pretty much any Terminator film really. So you've got Arnold Schwarzenegger's T-800 Terminator and comparing him to Marjorie Taylor Greene and oh look at that, you've got Amy Biggs in the background with that photo. You've also got Kyle Reese, I'm comparing him to other Christians that are against Christian nationalism, and um, the Freedom From Religion Foundation, another organization that specializes in religious extremism. And you've got Sarah Connor and John Connor from the first and second films respectively, and I'm in America, they're representing American democracy. So I've got a video right here that can kind of help to explain the analogy. So hopefully you guys enjoy. So let's get into it. Terminator is out there. It can't what? be bargained with. It can't yeah, be just reasoned with. It doesn't feel pity. Or remorse. Or um, fear. In a few it minutes, I'll try to quit. Children are dead. 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 So yeah, so what does the Constitution say about religion? Well, in the Establishment Clause of the First Amendment, it says Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion, nor will it prohibit the free exercise thereof. And Thomas Jefferson, the third president of the U.S., wrote in a letter to Danbury Baptist Church in Connecticut that this is meant to establish a, a separation of church and state. As you can see in the right, this is supposed to, what is the original document, the original letter that Thomas Jefferson wrote to Danbury Baptist Church. Here you have the establishment clause, and of course we're talking about Thomas Jefferson. You gotta have to vote with him. So why are we talking about this now? Well, we've really started talking about this, especially in the wake of the January 6th riot, Capitol riots, as it, it was really seen as the unifying ideology that inspired the attack. I mean, you could see, you literally see a bunch of Trumps of supporters of Donald Trump. They were seen praying together. They were holding Christian symbols throughout the attack, and they have flags with messages such as, Jesus is my savior, and Trump is my president, and make golly, make America godly again. And really, Christian figures such as Greg Locke and others, um, they really, they were claiming that God would give him a second term, and they really viewed him as kind of bringing Christianity to a more prominent position in the government. So... And of course, this is not the end. In fact, this is really just the tip of the iceberg. So, for example, let's look at Florida. In, in, in the state, Republican Governor Ron DeSantis launched a new education curriculum where, print, where he's trying to, quote-unquote, uh, um, teach students about misconceptions, where really this is involving the whitewashing of slavery and racism in the founding of the country, as well as discussing the impact of Jesus Christ and the Bible on America's failing. Really, this is just viewed 
Um, along with the recent Don't Say Gay bill that was signed, which limits discussions of LGBT issues in public schools, this is really just Christian nationalism being forced into education. Now, it doesn't just stop in Florida. In fact, many states across the country are in, uh, beginning to sign as the law new anti-LGBT bills, particularly those aimed at living in a transgender youth. For example, they are preventing them from obtaining gender-affirming care, or preventing them from playing in team sports that correspond with their gender identity because it, they really view um, homosexuality and anything that isn't heterosexuality as stuff that's going against the Bible. And, of course, this is at the end, and another way we see the effects of Christian nationalism is with abortion. In fact, with the recent Supreme Court ruling, um, Dobbs v. Jackson Women Health, Women's Health Organization, which overturned Roe v. Wade, we all know that as the 1973 Supreme Court decision, which made abortion uh, as a protected right under the 14th Amendment of the Constitution. And this was really a victory for many Christian nationalists, um, especially after um, three Supreme Court justices appointed by former President Trump were seen as Wildly, very conservative, they would really they would kind of overturn Roe v. Wade, and that would cause into questions other protect uh, rights protected under the Fourteenth Amendment, such as gay marriage, contraceptive, contraceptives, and even interracial marriage. So, and of course, this has coincided with the increase in white nationalist attacks, such as what we've seen in Charlottesville, Virginia, in 2017. The the recent shooting in Buffalo, New York, where in El Paso, Texas, where black and Hispanic Americans have been targeted specifically. Even attacks on mosques and synagogues have increased. And really, Christian nationalism has been endorsed by white nationalists. And they view any tactic, including violence, like if they view it as necessary, they will use it. I mean, we've, we've already seen what happened on January 6th and the and the recent attacks, as I mentioned earlier. Now, who has endorsed this ideology, and what else should we worry about it? Well, you've seen Republican representatives such as Marjorie Taylor Greene, Lauren Bober, Josh, Senator Josh Hawley, and other and other conservative Republican legis politicians endorse this ideology. But nowhere is this more uh, notorious than with former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn as he's found himself not just in the center of Christian nationalism, but QAnon as well. It's not, which, of course, is this conspiracy theory that there was a secret cabal of, of, of elites that, unquote, that are said to engage in Satanism and cannibalism of infants. This, which, of course, is not true, but that hasn't stopped um, many people from believing in it. And... That's and the disturbing part is not that Michael Flynn believes in it, but also that because he has such experience, he has a lot of experience in the military, um, his understanding of the military, people are less likely to question w the claims. I mean, and other information. So another main tenet is how the world will end. Now, many Christian nationalists believe that um, n many nations are supposedly going to declare war on Israel, and if the United States comes to the defense of Israel, Jesus will come back to take his followers to heaven. And we, and for example, the man on the screen right now, Pat Robson, a very famous televangelist, recently, back in February, claimed that at the start of the Russian invasion of Ukraine, he, he claimed it happened because Putin was compelled by God to, fill, to fulfill, quote-unquote, quote biblical prophecy. In fact, Pat Robertson is notorious for making uh, predictions on the end times. One, back in the 1980s, they were, he predicted there would be a war in Israel and Jesus would come back. And, of course, this was not true. Now, this doesn't end with the U.S. As you can see, um, Christian nationalism and religious nationalism in general is on the rise in multiple democracies around the world. For example, here I'm pointing to Giorgio Milani, the, who was recently elected prime minister in Italy, and is the first prime minister, far right prime minister, since Benito Mussolini. That the prime minister, of course, who would ally himself with Ben, who would um, Adolf Hitler in Germany. 
Um, you'll even you see Jair Bolsonaro, the president of Brazil, Hungary's Prime Minister Viktor Orban, Donald Trump, as I mentioned earlier, some many Republican officials who are on the ballot at this year's midterm elections, such as Doug Mastriano and with the gubernatorial election in Pennsylvania, Ron DeSantis, Josh Hawley, um, Lauren Boebert, and Marjorie Taylor Greene, as I mentioned earlier, and even even in Turkey with Recep Tayyip Erdogan, the president, who Turkey is not a is not a Christian, doesn't is not a majority Christian. It's majority Muslim, but it but still there are very striking similarities between the two. So what can we do about? Well, obviously, vote. I mean, you can't. I mean, if we know what the objectives of many Christian nationalists, it should be enough to for everyone to understand and see just how dangerous this is to the country. You can also donate and support organizations that specialize in religious nationalism, such as the Freedom from Religion Foundation and Christians Against Christian Nationalism. And you can even, um, heck, the Southern Poverty Law Center, which specializes in taking legal action against discrimination and its classifications, of which organizations, organizations are deemed to be hate groups. And this, including those that espouse Christian nationalist ideas. And, of course, checking your information, um, and also just spread the message. Um, we, do, like, this is something that we're only, that we've only begun talking about in recent years. So, if the more we talk about this, the more we tell people about how this is a dangerous ideology, um, then hopefully the more people will be aware about this. Now, I want to, now, of course, I'm going to introduce some historical viewpoints. Um, the founding fathers, um, for as flawed as they were, they had a very good understanding that mixing church and state would not be productive. For example, for president of the U.S., James Madison, saying, religion and politics will remain in greater purity unless they are mixed together. Former Republican senator from Arizona, Barry Goldwater, he was against Pat Robertson and his methods of using religion to raise funds for Republican candidates. He even said, quote, politics and governing demand compromise, but these Christians believe they are acting in the name of God, so they can't and won't compromise. I mean, these are examples of, that show they understood the potential dangers of church and state, how it would have a negative impact on our nation as a whole, and these things are now coming true. And personally, I think this could be the challenge that determines how America will define itself in the 21st century. Before I go, um, I did make this meme. Yes, how Christian nationalists view themselves versus what they really are, since they're really targeting individual and private rights, such as abortion, LGBTQ rights, and also racism is included. Here you have Trump as a Terminator saying, I'll be back because many people are assuming he'll be back, and this is just for random. And I, ha and I have another YouTube video I made, so... Let's go there real quick. There's a storm coming and it won't be stopped. But it has to be. You know what will happen. You better than anyone. I can't be bargained with. I can't be reasoned with. God, please. I don't feel pity or remorse or fear. John, please! I absolutely will not stop ever until Skynet rules this world. Rule this. And that is it. Thanks for listening. Hasta la vista, baby. Is going to do it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching today's vlog. Thank you so much for tuning for staying in for the presentation. Again, I real I am so sorry for not being able to record it in class. Hopefully, in but so, and hopefully you guys do enjoy that I recorded the the presentation for you exclusively for you guys so once again thank you so much for understanding and as always if you are if you did enjoy the video please make sure to like and subscribe 
and to like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel if you want to keep seeing more vlogs from me. Also, if you want to check out more content that isn't on my YouTube channel, please do head to the link down below in the description to check out my social media such as Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, and TikTok if you want to follow me on there. And as always, if you are interested, please do share. And as always, I will see you in the, ne in the next vlog. See you later, guys.